Hi friends, my name is Lizbeth and normally on this channel what I do is I do my makeup and I tell a story. I talk about something that interests me. Uh, today I guess I decided I needed a challenge and my editing skills and really just everything else. So I guess I just needed a challenge today. But what I did was I did my makeup and then I, I filmed myself doing my makeup and then I recorded myself reading the story because I found this really cute Christmas story and I hadn't heard of it before, but it's it, I, but it's really cute. I feel like it's got it's it's just a great it's a great Christmas story. And so I, but I felt that it would be harder to try and tell the story while doing my makeup. So I filmed. So again, I filmed myself uh, doing my makeup, and then I told uh, recorded myself telling the story, and I put those together. Uh, so, please let me know what you think of it, and if you think I should do more stories like this, or if I should do more videos like this, or if you have any other Christmas, uh, stories you think I should do, stories, traditions, legends, I don't know, really anything Christmassy this month, or really any other stories you think are interesting that I should talk about for any other time of the year. Uh, but I always love to see, how, see comments or, and make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button. It's just down there, just down there. Um, and you will get notified of more awesome content when I upload it. And this month I am uploading every day and hopefully that'll continue on. But, oh, and don't forget to ring that bell also so that you get uh, notifications when I upload. And anyway, yeah, this is the look I did. And this is after wearing it for a few hours today. Or this is after wearing it for hours today. And uh, so, sorry, I was spaced out there for a sec. But yeah, this is after wearing it for a few hours today. And I feel like it still looks pretty dang good. Um, I really like the, how my eyes turn out, except for the eyeliner. I didn't do great on the, I tried to wing it and I didn't do great. Just need a little more practice on winging. But anyway, I, uh, without further ado, let's get to the story. Hi friends. So I'm not gonna lie, this is a little harder than I thought it would be. Um, this is like my fifth try or something at recording. So we're gonna try it again and hopefully it goes well. So. Here we go. A Christmas Dream and How It Came to Be by Louisa May Alcott. I'm so tired of Christmas, I wish there would never be another one, exclaimed a discontented looking little girl as she sat idly watching her mother arrange a pile of gifts two days before they were to be given. Why, Effie, what a dreadful thing to say. You are as bad as old Scrooge and I'm afraid something will happen to you as it did to him. If you don't care for dear Christmas, answered Mamma, almost dropping the silver horn she was filling with delicious candies. Who was Scrooge? What happened to him? asked Effie with a glimmer of interest in her listless face as she picked out the sourest lemon drop she could find, for nothing sweet suited her just then. He was one of Dickens' best, Dickens's best people, and you can read that charming story some day. He hated Christmas until a strange dream showed him how dear and beautiful it was, and made a better man of him. I shall read it, for I like dreams and have a great many curious ones myself, but they don't keep me from being tired of Christmas, said Effie, poking discontentedly among the sweeties for something worth eating. Why are you tired of what should be the happiest time of all the year? asked Mamma anxiously. Perhaps I shouldn't be if I had something new, but it is always the same, and there isn't any more surprise about it. I always find heaps of goodies in my stocking, don't like some of them, and soon get tired of those I do. Like, we always have a great dinner, and I eat too much, and feel ill the next day. Then there is a Christmas tree somewhere with a doll on top, or a stupid old Santa Claus, and children dancing and screaming over bonbons and toys that break, and shiny things that are of no use. Really, Mama, I've had so many Christmases all alike that I don't think I can bear another one. 
and Effie laid herself flat on the sofa as if the mere idea was too much for her. Her mother laughed at her despair, but was sorry to see her little girl so discontented when she had everything to make her happy and had known but ten Christmas days. Suppose we don't give you any presents at all. How would that suit you? asked Mamma, anxious to please her spoiled child. I should like one large and splendid one and one dear little one to remember some very nice person by, said Effie, who was a fanciful little body full of odd whims and notions, which her friends loved to gratify regardless of time, trouble, or money, for she was the last of three little girls and very dear to all the family. Well, my darling, I will see what I can do to please you and not say a word until all is ready. If I could o if I could only get a new idea to start with. And Mamma went on tying up her pretty bundles with a thoughtful face, while Effie strolled to the window to watch the rain that kept her indoors and made her dismal. Seems to me poor children have better times than rich ones. I can't go out and there is a girl about my age splashing along without any maid to fuss about rubbers and cloaks and umbrellas and colds. I wish I was a beggar girl. Would you like to be hungry, cold, and ragged to beg all day and sleep on an ash heap at night? asked Mamma, wondering what would come next. Cinderella did and had a nice time in the end. This girl out here has a basket of scraps on her arms and a big old shawl all around her and doesn't seem to care a bit, though the water runs out of the toes of her boots. She goes paddling along, laughing at the rain and eating a cold potato as if it tasted nicer than the chicken and ice cream I had for dinner. Yes, I do think poor children are happier than rich ones. So do I sometimes. At the orphan asylum today, I saw two dozen merry little souls who have no parents, no home, and no hope of Christmas beyond a stick of candy or a cake. I wish you had been there to see how happy they were playing with the old toys some richer children had sent them. You may give them all mine. I'm so tired of them, I never want to see them again, said Effie, turning from the window to the pretty baby house full of everything a child's heart could desire. I will, and let you begin again with something you will not tire of, if I can only find it. And Mamma knit her brows, trying to discover some grand surprise for this child who didn't care for Christmas. Nothing more was said then, and, a, and wandering off to the library, Effie found a Christmas carol, and curling herself up in the sofa corner, read it all before tea. Some of it she did not understand, but she laughed and cried over many parts of the charming story, and felt better without knowing why. All the evening she thought of poor tiny Tim, Mrs. Cratchit with the pudding, and the stout old gentleman, who danced so gaily that his legs twinkled in the air. Presently, her bedtime arrived. Come now and toast your feet, said Effie's nurse, while I do your pretty hair and tell stories. I'll have a fairy tale tonight, a very interesting one, commanded Effie, as she put on her blue silk wrapper and little fur-lined slippers to sit before the fire and have her long curls brushed. So Nursie told her best tales, and when at last the child lay down under her laced curtains, her head was full of a curious jumble of Christmas elves, poor children, snowstorms, sugar plums, and surprises. So it is no wonder that she dreamed all night, and this was the dream which she never quite forgot. She found herself sitting on a stone in the middle of a great field all alone. The snow was falling fast. A bitter wind whistled by, and night was coming on. She felt hungry, cold, and tired, and did not know where to go nor what to do. I wanted to be a beggar girl, and now I am one, but I don't like it and wish somebody would come and take care of me. I don't know who I am, and I think I must be lost, thought Effie, with the curious interest one takes in oneself in dreams. But the more she thought about it, the more bewildered she felt. Faster fell the snow, colder blew the wind, darker grew the night, and poor Effie made up her mind that she was quite forgotten and left to freeze alone. The tears were chill on her cheeks, her feet felt like icicles, and her heart died within her, 
so hungry, frightened, and forlorn was she. Laying her head on her knees, she gave herself up for lost, and sat there with the great flakes fast turning her to a little white mound, when suddenly the sound of music reached her, and starting up, she looked and listened with all her eyes and ears. Far away a dim light shone, and a voice was heard singing. She tried to run toward the welcome glimmer, but could not stir, and stood like a small statue of expectation, while the light grew nearer, and the sweet words of, of the song grew clear. Okay, I'm just going to read these lyrics, because I don't know the tune, or even if it has a tune. From our happy home, through the world we roam, one week in all the year, making winter spring with the joy we bring. For Christmas tide is here, and now the eastern star shines from afar to light the poorest home. Hearts warmer grow, gifts freely flow, for Christmas tide has come. Now gay trees rise before young eyes, a bloom with tempting cheer. Blithe voices sing and blithe bells ring, for Christmas tide is here. O oh, happy chime, O oh, blessed time, that draws us all so near. Welcome, dear day, all creatures say, for Christmas tide is here. A child's voice sang, a child's hand carried the little candle, and in the circle of soft light it shed, Effie saw a pretty child coming to her through the night in snow, a rosy smiling creature wrapped in white fur with a wreath of green and scarlet holly on its shining hair, the magic candle in one hand and the other outstretched as if to shower gifts and warmly press all other hands. Effie forgot to speak as this bright vision came nearer, leaving no trace of footsteps in the snow, only lighting the way with its little candle and filling the air with the music and filling the air with the music of its song. Dear child, you are lost, and I have come to find you, said the stranger, taking Effie's cold hands in his, with a smile like sunshine, while every holly berry glowed with a little fire. Do you know me? asked Effie, feeling no fear, but a great gladness at his coming. I know all children, and go to find them, for this is my holiday, and I gather them from all parts of the world to be merry with me once a year. Are you an angel? asked Effie, looking for the wings. No, I am a Christmas spirit, and live with my mates in a pleasant place, getting ready for our holiday when we are led out to roam about the world helping make this a happy time for all who will let us in. Will you come and see how we work? I will go anywhere with you. Don't leave me again, cried Effie gladly. First, I will make you comfortable. That is what we love to do. You are cold and you shall be warm. Huh? You are cold and you shall be warm. Hungry and I will feed you. Sorrowful and I will make you gay. With a wave of his candle, all three miracles were wrought. For the snowflakes turned to a white fur cloak and hood on Effie's head and shoulders. A bowl of hot soup came sailing to her lips and vanished when she had eagerly drunk the last drop. And suddenly the dismal field changed to a new world so full of wonders that all her troubles were forgotten in a minute. Bells were ringing so merrily that it was hard to keep from dancing. Green garlands hung on the walls, and every tree was a Christmas tree full of toys and blazing with candles that never went out. In one place, many little spirits sewed like mad on warm clothes, turning off work faster than any sewing machine ever invented, and great piles were made ready to be sent to poor people. Other busy creatures packed money into purses and wrote checks which they sent flying away on the wind a lovely kind of snowstorm to fall into a world below full of poverty. Older and graver spirits were looking over piles of little books in which the records of the past year were kept, telling how different people had spent it and what sort of gifts they deserved. Some got peace, some disappointment, some remorse and sorrow, some great joy and hope. The rich had generous thoughts sent them, the poor gratitude and contentment, Children had more love and duty to parents, and parents renewed patience, wisdom, and satisfaction for and in their children. No one was forgotten. Please tell me what splendid place this is, asked Effie as soon as she could collect her wits after the first look 
at all these astonishing things. This is a Christmas world. And here we work all year round, never tired of getting ready for the happy day. See, these are the saints just setting off for some have just setting off for some have far to go, and the children must not be disappointed. As he spoke, the spirit pointed to four gates, out of which four great sleighs were just driving, laden with toys, while a jolly old Santa Claus sat in the middle of each, drying on his mittens and tucking up his wraps for a long cold drive. Why well, thought there was only one Santa Claus, and even he was a humbug, cried Effie, astonished at the sight. Never give up your faith in the sweet old stories, even after you come to see that they are only the pleasant shadow of a lovely truth. Just then, the sleighs went off with a great jingling of bells and pattering of reindeer hoofs, while, while all the spirits gave a cheer that was heard in the lower world, where people said, Hear the stars sing. I will never say there isn't any Santa Claus again. Now show me more. You will like to see this place, I think, and may learn something here, perhaps. The spirit smiled as he led the way to a little door, through which Effie peeped into a world of dolls. Baby houses were in full blast, with dolls of all sorts going on like live people. Waxen ladies sat in their parlors elegantly dressed. Black dolls cooked in the kitchens. Nurses walked out with the bits of dollies. And the streets were full of tin soldiers marching, wooden horses prancing, express wagons rumbling, and little men hurrying to and fro. Shops were there, and tiny people buying legs of mutton, pounds of tea, mites of clothes, and everything dolls use or wear or want. But presently she saw that in some ways the dolls improved upon the manners and customs of human beings and she watched eagerly to learn why they did these things. A fine Paris doll driving in her carriage took up a black worsted Dinah, who was hobbling along with a basket of clean clothes, and carried her to her journey's end. And if it were the proper th as if it no, as if it were the proper thing to do. Another interesting China lady took off her comfortable red cloak and put it around a poor wooden creature done up in a paper shift and so badly painted that its face would have sent some babies into fits. Seems to me I once knew a rich girl who didn't, get, who didn't give her things to poor girls. I wish I could remember who she was and tell her to be as kind as that china doll, said Effie, much touched at the sweet way the pretty creature wrapped up the poor fright and ran off in her, gay, in her little gray gown to buy a shiny fowl stuck on a wooden platter for her invalid mother's dinner. We recall these things to people's minds by dreams. I think the girl you speak of won't forget this one. And the spirit smiled, as if he enjoyed some joke, which she did not see. A little bell rang as she looked, and away scampered the children into the red and green schoolhouse, with the roof that lifted up so one could see how nicely they sat at their desks with mites of books, or drew on the inch square chalk, uh, inch square blackboards with crumbs of chalk. They know their lessons very well and are as still as mice. We make a great racket at our school and get bad marks every day. I shall tell the girls they had better mind what they do, or their dolls will be better scholars than they are," said Effie, much impressed as she peeped in and saw no rod in the hand of the little mistress who looked up and shook her head at the intruder, as if begging her to go away, before the order of the school was disturbed. Effie retired at once, but could not resist one look in at the window of a fine mansion, where the family were at dinner. The children behaved so well at table, and never grumbled a bit when their mamma said they could not have any more fruit. Now show me something else, she said, and as they came again to the low door that led out, she said as they came again to the low door that led out of Dollland, You have seen how we prepare for Christmas. Let me show you where we love best to send our good and happy gifts, answered the spirit, giving her his, hands again, his hand again. I know, I've seen ever so many, began Effie, thinking of her own Christmases. No, you have never seen what I will show you. Come away and remember what you see tonight. 
Like a flash, that bright world vanished, and Effie found herself in a part of the city she had never seen before. It was far away from the gayer places where every store was brilliant with lights and full of pretty things, and every house wore a festival air, wore a festive air, festival air, while people hurried to and fro with merry greetings. It was down among the dingy streets where the poor lived, and where there were and where there was no making ready for Christmas. Hungry women looked in at the shabby shops, longing to buy meat and bread, but empty pockets forbade. Tipsy men drank up their wages in the bar rooms, and in many cold, dark chambers, little children huddled under their thin blankets, trying to forget, trying to forget their misery in sleep. No nice dinners filled the air with savory smells. No gay trees dropped toys and bonbons into eager hands, no little stockings hung in rows beside the chimney piece ready to be filled. No happy sounds of music, gay voices, and dancing feet were heard. And there were no signs of Christmas anywhere. Don't they have any in this place? asked Effie, shivering, as she held fast to the spirit as she held fast the spirit's hand, following where he led her. We come to bring it. Let me show you our best workers. And the spirit pointed to some sweet-faced men and women who came stealing into the poor houses, working such beautiful miracles that Effie could only stand and watch. Some slipped money into the empty pockets and sent the happy mothers to buy all the comforts they needed. Others led the drunken men out of temptation and took them home to find safer pleasures there. Fires were kindled on, clo on clo cold ha hearths. A uh, table spread as if by magic, and warm clothes wrapped round shivering limbs. Flowers suddenly bloomed in the chambers of the sick old people found, of the sick. Old people found themselves remembered, and sad hearts were consoled by a tender word, and wicked ones softened by the story of him who forgave all sin. But the greatest work was for the children, and Effie held her breath to watch these human fairies. Hang up and fill the little stockings without which a child's Christmas is not perfect, putting in things that once she would have thought very humble presents, but which now seemed beautiful and precious because these poor babies had nothing. That is so beautiful. I wish I could make merry Christmases as these good people do and be loved and thanked as they are, said Effie softly as she watched the busy men and women do their work and still away without thinking of any reward but their own satisfaction. You can, you can if you will. I have shown you the way. Try it, and see how happy your own ho holiday will be hereafter. As he spoke, the spirit seemed to put his arms about her and vanished with a kiss. Oh, stay and show me more, cried Effie, trying to hold him fast. Darling, wake up and tell me why you are smiling in your sleep, said a voice in her ear, and opening her eyes, there was Mamma bending over her, and morning sunshine streamed into the room. Are they all gone? Did you hear the bells? Wasn't it splendid? She asked, rubbing her eyes and looking about her for the pretty child, who was so real and sweet. You have been dreaming at a great rate, talking in your sleep, laughing and clapping your hands as if you were cheering someone. Tell me what was so splendid, said Mamma, smoothing the tumbled hair and lifting up the sleepy head. Then, while she was being dressed, Effie told her dream, and Nursie thought it very wonderful. But Mamma smiled to see how curiously things the child had thought, read, heard, and seen through the day were mixed up in her sleep. The spirit said I could work lovely miracles if I tried, but I don't know how to begin, for I have no magic candle to make feasts appear and light up groves of Christmas trees as he did, said Effie sorrowfully. Yes, you have. We will do it. We will do it. And clapping her hands, Mamma suddenly began to dance all over the room as if she had lost her wits. How, how, you must tell me, Mamma, cried Effie, dancing after her and ready to believe anything possible when she remembered the adventures of the past night. I've got it, I've got it, the new idea, a splendid one, if I can only carry it out. And Mamma waltzed the little girl round till her curls flew wildly in the air while Nursie laughed as if she would die. Tell me, tell me, shrieked Effie. No, no, it is a surprise, a grand surprise for Christmas Day. 
sang Mama, evidently charmed with her happy thought. Now come to breakfast, for we must work like bees if we want to play spirits tomorrow. You and Nursie will go out shopping and get heaps of things while I arrange matters behind the scenes. They were running downstairs as Mama spoke, and Effie called out breathlessly, It won't be a surprise, for I know you are going to ask some poor children here and have a tree or something. It won't be like my dream, for they had ever so many trees and more children than we can find anywhere. There will be no tree, no party, no dinner and the, in this house at all, and no presents for you. Won't that be a surprise? And Mama laughed at Effie's bewildered face. Do it. I shall like it, I think, and I won't ask any questions so, will, so it will all burst upon me when the time comes, she said, and ate her breakfast, th breakfast thoughtfully, for this really would be a new sort of Christmas. All that morning, Effie trotted after Nursie in and out of shops, buying dozens of barking dogs, woolly lambs, and squeaking birds, tiny tea sets, gay picture books, mittens and hoods, dolls and candy. Parcel after parcel was sent home, but when Effie returned, she saw no trace of them, though she peeped everywhere. Nursie chuckled, but wouldn't give a hint, and went out again in the afternoon with a long list of more things to buy, while Effie wandered forlornly about the house, missing the usual merry stir that went before the Christmas dinner and the evening fun. As for Mama, she was quite invisible all day, and came in at night, so tired that she could only lie on the sofa to rest, smiling as if some very pleasant thought had made her happy in spite of her weariness. Is the surprise going on all right? asked Effie anxiously, for it seemed an immense time to wait till another evening came. Beautifully, better than I expected, for several of my good friends are helping, or I couldn't have done it as I wish. I know you will like it, dear, and long remember this new way of making Christmas merry. Mama gave her a very tender kiss, and Effie went to bed. The next day was a very strange one, for when she woke there was no stocking to examine, no pile of gifts under her napkin, no one said Merry Christmas to her, and the dinner was just as usual to her. Mamma vanished again, and Nursie kept wiping her eyes and saying, The dear thinks it's the prettiest idea I heard of, I ever heard of. No one but your blessed Ma could have done it. Do stop, Nursie, or I shall go crazy because I don't know the secret, cried Effie more than once, and she kept her eye on the clock, for at seven in the evening the surprise was to come off. The longed-for hour arrived at last. And the child was too excited to ask questions when Nurse put on her cloak and hood, led her to the carriage, and they drove away, leaving the house, the one dark and silent one, in the row. I feel like the girls in the fairy tales who are led off to strange places and see fine things, said Effie in a whisper as they jingled through the gay streets. Ah, oh, my dearie, it is like it is like a fairy tale, I do assure you, and you will see finer things than most children will tonight. Steady now, and do just as I tell you, and don't say one word, whatever you see, answered Nursie, quite quavering, quite quivering with excitement, as she patted a large box in her lap and in her lap and nodded and laughed with twinkling eyes. They drove into a dark yard, and Effie was led through a, a back door to a little room, where Nurse coolly proceeded to take off not only her cloak and hood, but her dress and shoes also. Effie stared and bit her lips, but kept still until out of the box came a little white fur coat and boots, a wreath of holly leaves and berries, and a candle with a frill of gold paper uh, with a frill of gold paper around it. A long, oh, escaped her then, and when she was dressed and saw herself in the glass, she started back, exclaiming, "Why, Nursie, I look like the spirit in my dream." So you do, and that is the part you are to play, my pretty. Now waste, now waste while, I while I blind your eyes and put you in your place. Shall I be afraid? whispered Effie, full of wonder. For as they went out, she heard the sound of many voices, the tramp of many feet, and in spite of the bandage, was sure a great light shone upon her when she stopped. You needn't be. I will stand close by, and your ma will be there. After the handkerchief was tied about her eyes, Nurse left. Nurse led Effie up some steps and placed her on a high platform, where something like leaves touched her head and the soft snap of lamps seemed to fill the air. Music began as soon as Nurse clapped her hands. The voices outside sounded nearer, 
and the tramp was evidently coming up the stairs. Now, my precious, look and see how you and your dear ma have made a merry Christmas for them that needed it. Off went the bandage, and for a minute Effie really did think she was asleep again, for she actually stood in a grove of Christmas trees, all gay and shining as in her vision, twelve on a side, in two rows, down the room, stood the little pines, each one on its low table, and behind Effie a taller one rose to the roof hung with wreaths of popcorn, apples, oranges, horns of candy, and cakes of all sorts, from sugary hearts to gingerbread jumbos. On the smaller trees she saw many of her own discarded toys, and those nursey bought and those nurses nursey bought, as well as heaps that seemed to have rained down straight from the from that delightful Christmas country where she felt as if she was again. How splendid! Who is it for? What is that noise? Where is Mamma? cried Effie, pale with pleasure and surprise, as she stood looking down the brilliant little street from her high place. Before a nurse could answer, the doors at the lower end flew open, and in marched twenty-four little blue-gowned orphan girls, singing sweetly until amazement changed the song to cries of joy and wonder as the shining spectacles appeared. While they stood staring with round eyes at the wilderness of pretty things about them, Mamma stepped up beside Effie, and holding her hand fast to give her courage, told the story of the dream in a few simple words, ending in this way. So my little girl wanted to be a Christmas spirit too, and make this a happy day for those who had not as many surprises and comforts as she has. She likes surprises, and we planned this for you all. She shall play the good fairy and give each of you something from this tree, after which everyone will find her own name on a small tree and can go enjoy it in her own way. March by, my dears, and let us fill your hands. Nobody told them to do it. But all the hands were clapped heartily before a single child stirred. Then one by one they came to look up wonderingly at the pretty giver of the feast. As she leaned down to offer them great yellow oranges, red apples, bunches of grapes, bonbons, and cakes, till all were gone, and a double row of smiling faces turned toward her as the children filed back to their places in the orderly way they had been taught. And then each was led to her own tree by the good ladies who had helped Mama with all their hearts, and the happy hubbub that arose would have satisfied even Santa Claus himself. Shrieks of joy, dances of delight, laughter, and tears, for some tender little things could not bear so much pleasure at once, and sobbed with mouths full of candy and hands full of toys. How they ran to show one another the new treasures! How they peeped and tasted, pulled and pinched, until the air was full of queer noises, the floor covered with papers, and the little trees left bare of all, of all but candles. I don't think, I don't think heaven can, can be any gooder than this! sighed one small girl as she looked about her in a blissful maze, holding her full apron with one hand, while she luxuriously carried sugar plums to her mouth with the other. Is that truly an angel up there? asked another, fascinated by the little white figure with the wreath on its shining hair, who in some mysterious way had been the cause of all this merrymaking. I wish I dared to go up and kiss her for this splendid party said a lame child, leaning on her crutch, as she stood near the steps, wondering how it seemed to sit in a mother's lap, as Effie was doing, while she watched the happy scene be before her. Effie heard her, and remembering Tiny Tim, ran down and pulled her, and put her arms about the pale child, kissing the wistful face, as she said sweetly, You may, but Mamma deserves this thanks. She did it all. I only dreamed about it. Lame, Kel lame Katie felt as if a truly angel was embracing her and could only stammer out her thanks while the other children ran to see the pretty spirit and touch her soft dress until she stood in a crowd of blue gowns laughing as they held up their gifts for her to see and admire. Mama leaned down and whispered one word to the older girls and suddenly they all took hands to dance around Effie singing as they skipped. It was a pretty sight, and the ladies found it hard to break up the happy re uh, revel. But it was late for small people, and too much fun is a mistake. 
So the girls fell into line and marched before Effie and Mama again to say goodnight with such grateful little faces that the eyes of those who looked grew dim with tears. Mama kissed everyone and made a, and many a hungry childish heart felt as if the touch of those tender lips was their best gift. Effie shook so many small hands that her own tingled, and when Katie came, she pressed a small doll into Effie's hand, whispering, You didn't have a single present, and we had lots. Do keep that. It's the prettiest thing I got. I will, answered Effie, and held it fast until the last smiling face was gone. The surprise all over, and she came, and she safe in her own bed, too tired and happy for anything but sleep. Mama, it was a beautiful surprise, and I thank you so much. Hold on. <clears throat> Mama, it was a beautiful surprise, and I thank you so much. I don't see how you did it, but I like it best of all the Christmases I ever had, and mean to make one every year. I had my splendid big present, and here is the dear little one to keep for the love of poor Katie. So even that part of my wish came true. And Effie fell asleep with a happy smile on her lips, her one humble gift still in her hands, and a uh, hold on, sorry. Uh. And Effie fell asleep with a happy smile on her lips her one humble gift still in her hand, and a new love for Christmas in her heart that never changed through a, through a long life spent in doing good. All right, guys, that is the end of the story. I read that story recently, and I kind of fell in love with it. It's just, it's like a tame, it's like a tamer version of A Christmas Carol. <laughs> And I love Louisa May Alcott's works anyway. But I, and I had never heard of this story before I saw it recently. But it's just, I think it's a wonderful story. It takes a girl from this girl who was, who she had everything. She was spoiled. She had everything that she could probably ever want. But she wasn't happy because... She just, she felt like her life was myth missing something, and she found it. And she found that the true meaning of Christmas wasn't about all the toys or the gifts. It was about it was about giving, making life better, giving people who don't have as much uh, what she had, and just. Being unselfish. It was about giving people happiness and joy. And I just, I really like it. It has a great feel to it. Um, it's a great story. I'll, I will post the link down below so you guys can read it yourselves if you would like. But it's just, I think it's, um, it's definitely one of my favorite Christmas stories that I've read so far. Sorry, my voice is a little tired now from reading, but um, I so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I look, I finished the story before I finished my makeup. I'm almost done with my makeup, but I hope you guys just really enjoyed this story. I hope you guys are having an awesome Christmas season, and that Christmas is. No matter how you spend Christmas this year or how you spend the season, that it is everything you could want and that you have lots of time with family and friends and that you get everything you want and that you just have the best time. And sorry, I'm, I'm actually doing my lips on camera this time because I'm not trying to talk into my lips at the same time. 
husband asked me today why I don't do them on camera a lot. And it's really not that hard. I could do it on camera. I just, I just don't a lot. I don't know why. Maybe I'll start doing them on camera more. But... Yeah, so I just, I wish everything good for you all. And hold on just a sec. My husband has really good timing. Um, but yeah, so I just, I wish everything good for you guys. And that all your Christmas wishes and dreams and all your season wishes and dreams come true. And I sound like I'm saying goodbye, but don't worry, I'll be back again tomorrow. Um, I'm honestly trying to keep talking until this video ends because I don't want a whole lot of uh, dead air. But maybe I should just stop talking. I don't know. Um, anyway, you guys, please let me know down in the comments if you liked this way of doing the videos. Uh, I've, I might do more like this. I don't think I'll do this every day. But I quite enjoyed it, um, especially because I feel like I was able to read the story instead of fumbling along trying to do my makeup and tell the story at the same time. So maybe when I have a when I just have a story that I don't know as well, maybe I'll start doing it more like this. I don't know. But let me know what you think down in the comments. Please don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. You know where it is. And I'll post this up and I'll. I, at the beginning of the video, I'll have posted another um, introduction thing where I tell you to do that too. But yeah, so I just, I'm really about done talking. I'm almost done with my lips. So I wanted to, I'm going to talk about lips for a sec. So I wanted to do kind of a neutral, a neutralish look, maybe a darker neutralish look with some sparkles. I think I made it more, I made it a little more red than I meant to because I added some, I wanted to add some red sparkles. Um, and I ended up pretty much just making it more of a redder lip. I still like how it turned out. I think it turned out really good. Um, the one thing I don't like is I don't like my eyeliner. I wish I would have done that differently. Or I need, honestly, I just, I need to work on winging. Winging is harder than it looks, guys, let me tell you. But I, so I don't like the eyeliner, but I like, I do like the rest of my eyes. I think they turned out pretty great. And I do like how my lips turned out. Oh, and here I am adding some uh, gold sparkles because every look needs a little festive gold sparkle, right? Or every holiday look, you've got to have that festive gold in there. So, yeah. All right. So, I think I really am out of things to say now. So, I'm going to wrap it up now. And I'm going to say, again, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful December. Uh, please remember that to treat people with kindness and respect. Everyone has a story. We don't know what it is. Um, so a little kindness, respect, love, joy makes the world and the season a better place. So I will see you tomorrow and have an awesome rest of your day. Bye.